I'm you know what's another one it's... that's sort of like speaking of killer kit like that sort of theme it's a really dark thriller have you heard of this movie super dark times i haven't oh mm-hmm. you guys would love that it's really messed up it's like it's one of those movies that's like very slow and sort of like tickles your balls and then like shit gets insane the um evil seed you ever heard of that it's yeah, one the of the very seed? first bad seed? Two. bad seed bad that's seed. my oh, last yeah, movie I've seen every version. Oh, that's on my list ah, i'm sorry no go ahead forget i said that we were talking about Do killer it. kids and that's like the original killer kids movie. i know it's Do not it. on my list i'm sorry you can still talk about it we won't say any more about it until you get to it no <laughs> let's talk about it now since you mentioned it okay and you know about it Bad yeah. Seed was on my list, and that's, I was going to say, that's right up your alley since you did the Evil Kids How many do we have left, by the way? Because I have a few that I, I have, have to get in, but I'm debating if I should add one or two before. So how many I have two left? left, so. Carrie? But ever how many uh, you have left is fine. The, the Bad Seed was my last one, and then I had some maybes. But uh, the Bad Seed is just, it like you said, this was like 1954 or 56. Yeah, based, based on the based play, on based on a novel. Yeah. And it's truly a girl who's just born evil. evil. And there are occasionally some psychopaths and sociopaths who are just born that way. It's not always environment. And uh, it, it's an old movie, but just will give you goosebumps at how, how evil this little kid is. And what was so interesting about that movie, like it was a stage play. It was a book written by psych- actual child psychologists. Uh, and then uh, a play, and they actually had the the cast of the play was the cast of the movie, and that's oh, the I reason you have. That. That's okay. the reason it was all kind of shot like it was almost on stage where you could yeah. see everything. They just transformed it into film. Oh wow! Patty McCormick was brilliant as that little girl. Yeah. She really was. The um, I watched the Lifetime movie remake recently. It was terrible. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm glad Patty McCormick was in it. They paid homage to her. You know, she was the psychologist, but still, they could have done so much more with that. It's like that Omen remake they did in, what, 2007, 2000? That was so stupid. It was a freaking shot-by-shot remake. Why even bother? (laughs) That whole era of remakes was terrible. Okay, Mikey. I go? Um... I'm debate. Sorry, I'm debating between which one. Okay, I'll just pick one. Um, I'm gonna say this. You know what? Since we're talking about killer kids, oh, but then I have another one. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> side note first. Okay, this is my official pick. But if you want like a killer kid movie that's total like guilty pleasure, trashy '90s block or '80 whatever it was blockbustery goodness. This movie called Mikey. I've heard of it. It's the kid from Blank Check. (laughs) There's a kid that gets sent around to different adoption. They adopt him and then send him to the next one. Okay. Anyway, that is our Killer Kids section. Now, the opposite of Killer Kids. Summer of 84. Have you guys heard of that? Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, it's so good. It's sort of like, it, it was, maybe I think came out like 2018 or something. Um, and it's like, it's real sort of old fashioned 80s kind of movie. Like, uh, I don't watch Stranger Things, but apparently I've been told that's what the vibe is. Like that sort of Amblin style of these kids, like going on an adventure to solve a mystery that they wonder if uh, their neighbor is a serial killer. And so they're going to solve the crime. And they have their little bicycles. I love movies like that. And this is, I think, like the best version of it. Awesome. I've checked that out. It kind of, kind of sounds like Stand By Me. Mm-hmm. A little bit. It's definitely like in that genre. But this one is like a more ballsy version in that genre. Like it gets pretty messed up. I'll definitely check that out. Summer of 84. I haven't heard um, of either of those. Mine is, um, my next one is uh, Steven Spielberg's very first movie, 1971's Duel. Uh, with Dennis, Dennis Weaver. Uh, 
if you've ever suffered road rage or been terrified because somebody was following you too close, this is this is your movie. It's very much psychological horror. Uh, Dennis Weaver is a businessman on a business trip uh, between California and Arizona. He's, he's from Arizona. He's traveling to L.A. He goes through the desert towns to get there, and he somehow pisses off this trucker in this very old truck, and this truck, 18-wheeler, it looks like it has a face. That's how scary the, the truck is. You never see the driver, but it's just this driver trying to kill him via the truck yeah. the whole time. It's like chase scenes and through the desert. No one believes in this, this truckers trying to kill him. It's, I still, if, I, if an 18-wheeler gets too close to us when we're driving, I'm still like, you know, because of that movie. But it, it's really awesome. That, I've you know, never heard great. of it. What's it called? Duel? Duel. Duel. I've heard of it, but I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know it was a horror. There is a, I think there's a more modern one called The Duel, but you want the 71 one uh, by Steven, was uh, directed by Steven Spielberg. You know, it's an amazing car movie. I, I, I guess it's a little horror-ish. Uh, have you ever seen Death Proof? Quentin mm -hmm. Tarantino? Yes. Mm -hmm. I love that it's movie. It's good. Can't be anything with vehicles. Can't be horror. Like Stephen King, Christine, and what about a uh, uh, maximum overdrive? overdrive. I love <laughs> maximum overdrive. <laughs> That's what I was thinking of when you said trucker. I was like, mm, yeah. I wonder if she's seen that. Probably <laughs> anything Stephen King's done, I've seen it. <laughs> it, it. You know, that was the only one of his movies that he directed. Stephen oh, King directed that. that one. Yeah. I didn't know he directed any. And who was it? Rod, uh, Siskel and Ebert, one of them said, Stephen, stick to writing because you're a horrible <laughs> director. <laughs> wow. They were he so bitchy. I know. You should stick to writing because he's a terrible tweeter, too. That's yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mikey. I already did my last one. Yeah. If, okay. Yeah. Um, I have two more, I have two that I have to mention, but I also want to give an honorable mention to The House of the Devil. Have you guys heard of that? I've heard yes. of it. I'm not seeing it. Oh, I've it, seen so. it. It's excellent. Right. It's uh it's directed by Ty West, who recently did that movie uh X that came out this year. I don't know if you guys saw that. Um, it's really good. It's like very suspenseful, throwbacky kind of movie. But that's not the one that I was gonna talk about. Okay, that was my honorable mention. Next one on my list. This is again a movie that's sort of like doesn't have a genre, it's got horror thriller, drama, comedy, it's got everything. This is just a badass movie. Villains. Have you guys ever heard of it? Yes, no. I have. Came out maybe 2018, 2019 uh, with Bill Skarsgård and Micah Monroe from It Follows. I think they are the best movie couple ever. They are like ultimate couple goals. But, so the two of them play sort of like bumbling criminals who are like stupidly in love and they're this cute couple and their car breaks down and they go to rob a house dot 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 there's a couple that owns the house it's Kira Sedgwick and this other guy I forget his name the actor but the four of them the acting is like off the charts amazing so much crazy shit happens it was this was like one of the best movie theater experiences I've ever had. We were just like sitting there like this. It is you watch this movie, you will have a good ass time. Awesome. <laughs> did you have an I thought you did you have another one you wanted to I have one from? left, but do you have another? No, you, you can go and then I'll go. I've only got one left. Okay, you go, you go. I don't want to like all right. Monopolize. Okay, well, this would be uh probably one of my faves of all time, and it's uh 2020's The Hunt. This uh, lady back here is the final girl, uh, Crystal <laughs> May Creasy from Arkansas. And it's basically, it's dark comedy, it's satire. It's basically um, liberals that kidnap centrists and conservatives and hunt them on this island, like in the most dangerous game. And they pick the wrong centrist because that's what she is. <laughs> she's, she's a moderate because she takes them out. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see this one now. It's, it's so really good. good. She's amazing. Yeah. yeah. 
And think of if she's their mistaken identity, the, the, the leader of the cult of the liberals got her identity wrong and she's not even really supposed to be there, but she kicks their ass. Well, wow. <laughs> it's so stupid too, that they canceled, they literally canceled this movie. They, they there was controversy and they did, it was conservatives that were mad about it and they canceled the release and yeah. they hadn't even seen the movie. Cause first of all, it makes fun of everyone, yeah. but it makes liberals look infinitely worse than anyone. Yeah. It's, it's a great movie. I think that's why they had a centrist come out on top because, you know, she would represent regular people, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that aren't too far right or too far left. In my head canon, she's kind of a conservative, though. Yeah. <laughs> she's more conservative than liberal. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. You know it. Come on now. And then my honorable mentions, and this is only because I, I'm sure I'm the only one here that's not real, that's not a Christian, not religious, but I'm an atheist, but because of my upbringing, I am just, my guilty pleasures are any Christian movie that deals with the end of the world. So Left Behind, uh, Thief in the Night, uh, Year of the Beast, any of those, I will, I'm actually a member of uh, Pure Flix, the Christian movie streaming service, <laughs> because these movies, I adore them so much. It's, I haven't seen any of these. They're so not. you ironically like them or you like them like them? I've never seen them. I like them like them. I mean, they are very much, if you're a Christian and you believe in the end times, the way that mm -hmm. Revelation says, literally, these are total psychological horror for you. Okay, give me the list again. Okay, I know um, Left Behind. I'm Left Behind, that. now the, not that... the one with Nick Cage, though that's interesting so too. The Kirk, that's what I was going to ask, the Kirk Cameron no. one? The, the original, there's three with Kirk Cameron. There's Left Behind, oh, World at War, life. and Tribulation Force. And then there's uh, Image of the Beast, or Year of the Beast. It's actually, a lot of these are free on YouTube. Okay. Um, and then uh, the uh, a Thief in the Night series, there's three of them. Okay. And uh, they're really, they're really, really dark. Not trying to scare anybody because those things scared me so much as a kid. To me, they're still hard. They're still scary. Yeah, scary. yeah. 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 Thank you. I have an honorable mention. Uh, this is a funny one. It's Troll 2. I kind of briefly mentioned it earlier. <laughs> uh, I love this movie so much. It, it's actually, it's just such an awful film. It was made by these Italians and it has nothing to do with Troll One, which starred Julia Louis Dreyfus and was about a troll. Right. Uh, this this movie is about goblins, and uh, they they came to the states to make this movie, and they just set up in this town and had auditions. So, like, the, one of the lead actors is the town dent. He actually was the dentist in the town where they filmed. Like, they just brought in regular people to be in this movie, and um, <clears throat> the costumes are bad. There's all kinds of problems with the goblin costumes. The the script is just over the top, dramatic and ridiculous. And um, it, but it, but it is real. It's one of those bad movies that's so bad, it's amazing. Yeah. And and there's a documentary about it now called The Best Worst Movie, uh, because w when I lived in Los Angeles, uh, they started showing Troll Two, and a lot of places started showing Troll Two because it it got this cult following for being such a terrible movie that it was good in fact i think on imdb it was rated like one of the top movies even though it was so terrible and so we used to go to these midnight screenings of it and it became this thing people learned all the lines and everything and then the the, the guy who played the kid in it ended up taking it on a tour he he saw that this was a phenomenon they made a whole documentary about it and um yeah it's just awful i used to buy vhs copies on ebay when people still had vcrs and um, if you get the old VHS copies, I would give them out for, as Christmas presents. And the old VHS oh, copies, the artwork didn't have a troll or a goblin on it. It's about goblins. The artwork had a werewolf on it and somebody with an ax. And you're like, there's no werewolf in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> if, so anyway. If you like movies kind of that are kind of campy fun, another one you might like is one of Clive Barker's. It's called A Nightbreed. It oh, is, I've heard of this, but I've never watched it. It's uh, it's very much a cult <laughs> movie. Um, it's kind of like Rocky Horror. The first time you see it, you may not entirely get it, but then you will, and it's it's really really good. It's <laughs> bad, so bad it's good. I love those. So you know what's one like that? Um, mm -hmm. not a horror, <clears throat> but since you mentioned Rocky Horror, shock treatment. Yeah. 
Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's a little bit of a mess of a movie, but it is so relevant to so many things we're going through now. Yeah. That you know, and uh, Pink Street. Flamingo, if you like John Waters, it's just mm-hmm. oh, trash. Cereal Mom. Cereal, yeah. Mom yeah. Cereal Mom. Cereal Mom is great. Cereal Mom's actually a good movie. It's just it is. It's satire of how we, and we still do it, how we make bad people into celebrities. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is a good movie. I love that movie. Um, okay, so I have like one main one left. I could go on, I, I could I could literally be here all night. Oh, yeah. Amazing. This is like oh my god, this is the best <clears throat> thing ever. Um so this oh this movie is just like a badass, good ass time. You want to have a good ass time, invite everyone you know over, put this movie on, you will have a killer night. Better watch out. You've seen Better Watch Out? No, no. I've never heard of it. It is like Home Alone on acid. It is so good. <laughs> Again, it has like a million different genres. It is so good. It's like the kid and the babysitter comes over. It's like these two young teenagers and he thinks he's going to like seduce the babysitter and his friend is there. And then dot, dot, dot. I'm not giving shit away because it's so good. But intruders come. And shit pops off from there. It is, this movie is just such a good ass time. It deserves, it's so underrated. It deserves to be so much more well known. Actually, the people who made this movie, this and villains are kind of, they'd make a good double feature. They're a little bit similar. It's different filmmakers, but I would love to see one of those directors do a Scream movie. That would, yeah. I think they would, They. it's a little similar vibe, kind of. The, uh, one of my movies that I really like, that, like that are sort sort of like that, is uh, it's Christmas horror. Uh, it's a uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night. It's just campy fun. It, it really is. An axe murderer that dresses up like Santa. Oh, I've seen this. Yeah, I've seen this. It is good. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, and I always get this confused with Black Christmas, which is also yep. great. Oh, that um, one with the the dude in the yeah. Billy in the sorority house, yeah, yeah, yeah. The original one is with Margot Kidder, is really good. That's the one, Margot Kidder, yeah, and John Saxon. We should do an episode on woke horror movies (laughs) because did you see the recent remake of Black Christmas? I made it about 10 minutes and shut it off. I was like, I can't. It's not even Black Christmas, there's no Billy, it has nothing to do with any Mm. of there's no reason it should be Black Christmas, but it's just like. It's like a two-hour lecture on gender Is studies. Is it about and... Kwanzaa? <laughs> <laughs> Just... White Kwanzaa. <laughs> the whites are the villain. <laughs> oh my god, that should be a movie. Black Christmas is just a Kwanzaa film. No, the villain is just <laughs> men. Yeah, just oh. men in general. Men. Oh man, oh come on. <laughs> Boring. Speaking of which, there's this new movie out called Men that I've heard is super woke. <laughs> we live in funny times. You know, <laughs> you know, I, there was some sort of backlash against the new uh, Top Gun, Maverick, because it wasn't woke. And like all yeah. these people were like, no, it's and it's done very well to because it's just a good movie. Good. I want to go see it. I keep, yeah, things keep Don't, coming up, but I want to see that one. There are, there are movies that can have a purpose, but overall, I think movies should be for entertainment, and I don't yes. want to be preached to during a movie. You can slide, like, some of those animal horrors, they were very much environmental horror, what can happen if we abuse this planet, but the message was subtle, but you came out knowing, okay, yes, our planet is dying, that's what happens when you use up the resources of a planet, but what these were saying, we need to do what we can to slow it down within reason, and I'm open to that message. Mm-hmm. And and I think that you can have social commentary if you want to without it being like I will swear all day long that I think Get Out is not at all a woke movie. Because, no, if you've right? ever heard Jordan Peele talk about it, he wrote that because it, based on his feelings of when he went home to meet his wife's family who was who was white. Well, and it's about but that's it's based on liberals. his feelings. It's like there yeah. are white liberals in it. Yeah, but, but I but I feel like it's not woke because it's not simplistic. It's a movie first and has commentary second 
Mm -hmm. And it's not just like reductive simplified, like it's not preaching at you. It's a movie, it's a standalone story. Right. It's basically these liberals that are so anti-racist, they're racist. Or they try to be. <laughs> I need to rewatch it. I didn't yeah. really the first time I did feel like he was sort of preaching at me, but also I love the original Step for Wives so much, mm -hmm. the seventies one. And I thought it was kind of a not a very great ripoff of that concept, but that was just my original opinion. And I was at the time, I think I was very, had a heightened awareness of wokeness. So maybe I felt being, I was being preached <laughs> at when I wasn't, I should probably watch it. I liked it a lot. Uh, by the way, yeah. I even love the horrible Stepford Wives remake from the 90s with Bette Midler. Oh, Did you ever yeah. see that? And Nicole Kidman? Mm, I couldn't. <laughs> Should I? It's worth a lot. It's a comedy. Okay. It's totally different. Like, it's entertaining. Oh, yes. I did see it. I did. I'm not watching it again. It's One horrible. Of the... <laughs> I love it. One of the few horror remakes that I thought was really, really good it's a sci-fi movie. It's the uh, 2000, maybe not even been there, late 90s remake of the original Children of the Corn. Actually really good. Oh, I want to see that. That's, on, that's been on my list for a while. I've never seen it. It's that. actually really good. And it actually sticks to the short story. Whereas, you know, the one, even though I love Linda Hamilton, <laughs> that movie just went so far off from the uh, short story that Stephen mm -hmm. King wrote. So off kilter. This one just sticks with the short story. And it's is really that the good. one that John Carpenter directed, or is that a different one I'm thinking of? No, it, I don't think Carpenter ever Village did. Village of the Damned. That's Village of the Damned. Remake of that. That's what I was thinking. The one about. with that's Christopher Reeve and uh, Kirstie that's, Alley. One of my favorites. One of my great. favorites. That's, that's been on my list forever. I haven't seen that's it. That's a good movie. Talk the original Nicole Children Kidman. of the Damned, the British version, is also very, very good. Uh, any more stragglers? Oh, my huh? God. How long do you have? <laughs> Well, I actually have to go soon. I have right. a meeting, believe it or not. I'm uh, <laughs> on a night, but I'm doing it. <laughs> well, all right, everyone. Super Dark Thanks. Times, like I said, is one that I think you'd really like. What is it? Super Dark Times. Okay. This list is very long now. I want to do my too. meeting. I've been writing all of them down. You know what's an Quickly amazing... Quickly so I can start watching something. What? You know what's an amazing, ballsy, fun-ass slasher that's way underrated? The Strangers Pray at Night. Have you seen that? Yes. <laughs> yes. It's totally standalone. You don't need to see the first one. I mm -hmm. like it a million times better than the first one. I, I liked both of those. Home Invasion movies just really weird me out that they really do because it, it could happen, you know? Mm -hmm. um, there is uh, another one that's really good. Don't Breathe. Yes! Uh, Where they try to break in on the blind guy and steal his money and then he flips the tables on him. It's really good. Oh, you good. would love that one, Carrie. Yeah. Huh. And then, of course, um, uh, the silent, the Quiet Place and the Quiet Place 2 are both good. And I can't wait for them to do a third one. I hope John Krasinski decides to do a third one because those were really good. Haunt was really good, too. Mm hmm I don't know if you've seen Haunt. Uh, the Taking of Deborah Logan is another one. Yeah. yeah. You know what you'd love, Carrie? Have you seen The Green Inferno? No. <laughs> uh, I don't usually like him all that much, but Eli Roth did it. And it's a about a bunch of social justice warriors who go to like South America or something to protest for the environment and get captured by a tribe of savages. So it's just a movie of watching like social justice warriors get tortured. It's amazing. Much why I appreciated the new Texas Chainsaw Mess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just looked this up because I was trying to remember. There's a couple of foreign home invasion movies I've seen that are pretty scary. One was called Them. Mm -hmm. Have you guys seen that? 2006? I haven't seen it, but I know what it is. French film. Yeah. That one's pretty scary. And I can't remember the other one. Uh, inside. It might have been Inside. There's um, both the American and the Spanish version are both really good. But Rec, R-E-C, like a recording, Rec. Mm. Um, you'd like this, Carrie, because it is a zombie movie with a twist. It's not zombie. It's a rabies outbreak. 
Oh, it's a mutated rabies. I've seen this movie. Yeah, the yeah. Spanish version is really good. If you like I've seen Spanish, the Spanish version with it's... English subtitles, but there's yep. an American version that's actually really good too. Oh, I should watch the American one. Oh, you know it's yeah. you know it's another really good one. It's more of a thriller, but I just I love these movies that are like roller coaster rides that you can gather mm -hmm. friends, family, and just have a good ass time. Have you seen Joyride? Yes, the car movie. Somewhat yes, also. Oh, we gotta watch that together, Carrie. You would love it. Okay, I'm I'm open for a good ass time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know I have to go. Oh, there was one of my, oh, I just had a question for you guys. What was the first movie you, cause, cause people always, some people who don't like horror, like my husband doesn't like horror. And a lot of times people who don't like horror, they think that those of us who enjoy it like it because we're not scared by it, but that's actually not true. And there've been no. studies that shown we are scared by it, but there's something about us that likes enjoy the that. Yeah. fear and then the, and then the period that comes after the fear the calming period. I've read some studies about this anyway, but um, I wonder sometimes if we saw a movie when we were young that scared us and that kind of that feeling, that adrenaline. So for me, I was wondering if you could tell me what was the first scary movie you remember seeing. For me, it was Pinocchio, the Disney Pinocchio. It scared yes. the bejesus out of me. And I think for the similar way that a zombie zombie movie scares me is because there's that scene where they become donkeys and it's like, this mm -hmm. is a human but not a human like you know these people but you don't and there was something about that transformation that happens into a monster into something monstrous that just terrified me as a child <laughs> thank you i thought i was the only person who was terrified of that i was just talking about that the other day with my mom and she was like what do you mean you're scared of pinocchio he's beautiful I'm like, <laughs> no he's terrifying. there was a um, first movie i remember seeing that actually left a uh and devil impression on me, there was uh, two. One was the original Children of the Corn because they killed their parents. That scarred me. And then um, The Secret of Nim. Because uh. these, you know, it was these rat, you know, these animals were fighting in this war and they died and some of them died. And it was about experimentation on animals. It was just uh. weird. And look at how that, look at the theme of the ones you like now as an adult. Animals. Animal horror. Animal horror. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Mine was uh, Child's Play 2. I was probably like <laughs> five. I was terrified of it, but I also loved him. And my godmother, because she's the one who showed it to me at her house, got me a Chucky doll. I was like five. That had blood dripping from his mouth, painted on the doll. And I would carry him like everywhere I went. We were besties. Um, <laughs> so that it was sort of linked to that. And then I saw Scream when I was maybe like six or seven. And the first time I watched it, I couldn't get past the opening scene. It was like the scariest thing I'd ever seen in my life. And then the next morning, I watched the whole movie with my dad and then was obsessed. Wait, how old were you when Scream came out? Uh, I wasn't born, I mean. <laughs> Did you say six or seven? You're so young, yeah. Mikey. I was in college when Scream came out. <laughs> yeah. I was, yeah. um, another one that I saw, and I probably shouldn't have seen it, but, you know, my mom didn't know it was what it was, but it was a cartoon. It was an uh, 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 animated adaption of Orwell's Animal Farm. Oh and I think goodness. that is the reason I'm such an Arctic capitalist, anti-communist, anti-socialist today. <laughs> <laughs> and you appreciate animal horror. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know what's a terrifying animal? Have you ever seen the original Watership Down? Yes. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. God. That's terrifying. I saw a lot of the, my generation, Generation X, we saw a lot of like very deep, disturbing subject matter that was disguised as animation. Watership Down, Secret of Nam, uh, Animal Farm, because our parents just didn't know. <laughs> You know. <laughs> also, so. not animation, but Return to Oz, anyone? Oh, my God. That was terrifying. Oh, my God, no. I I, I think I saw that twice as a kid, and I still know. You know Wizard of Oz does me not have horror? a sequel in my world. You know, what else, you know what else got me way into horror when I was a kid? Are You Afraid of the Dark was the yeah. best thing ever. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the Freddy Krueger, the original Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, I still... Yes. 
if I'm in the bathroom and the mirror fogs up, I still think Freddy Krueger's going to appear in that mirror once I wipe it. I Because he did that in one of those movies, and I still think it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, so when so Pinocchio affected me when I was very young. But when mm -hmm. I got a little bit older, uh, we were not allowed to watch scary movies, but I ended up watching some at a friend's house at a sleepover. Mm -hmm. And we watched Nightmare on Elm Street, number three. And we watched House, and both, to this day, if I were to watch them, they'd probably still scare me just as much, I think. I don't know. They just really... House 2, the second story, is campy as hell. You'd like that. It might have been House 2 that we watched. Uh, I don't know. I need to I need to rewatch those and see. And Return of the Living Dead, if you like campy zombie horror. Oh, that's so it. campy. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that. <laughs> um... I was just looking up when you were talking about the stuff at Gen X that we watched that was sort of because it was animated and and, and so uh, we watched it anyway. There was one that I saw. Now, I can't remember. I haven't tried to look this up in a while. It might have been live action. I can't remember if it was live. I think it was, maybe it was live action, but it was the Snow Queen. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember if that was the name of it. If it was just, a, it was about the Hans Christian Andersen story of the Snow Queen. Yeah. And, and. Uh, the Last Unicorn, another. Oh, yeah, yeah. Are the. Uh, <laughs> As much as I hate Mir Mia Farrow now, she did a great job in that movie. But mm -hmm. yeah, just very dark themed. They just gave it to us straight. That with the worry that nuclear bomb was going to drop at any moment, mm -hmm. hiding under our desks. We were a very, that's the reason we're such a nihilistic generation. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's true. Well. Well, thank you so much for having me on, Tracy. Thanks, everyone. I really I, love hanging out with you guys. I love hanging out with you guys. Um, for my subscribers, please go over and find Carrie and Mike. Uh, they do a lot of uh, social and political commentary and just good fun, pop culture, things like that. Go over and check them out. And uh, until next time, keto and crime.